from the Library of Congress in Washington, D.C. My name is Andrew Robb, and I am Head of Special Format Conservation and Coordinator of the Preservation Emergency Response Team at the Library of Congress. Today, my colleague, Alan Haley, and I will be talking about how we prepare for and respond to emergencies that threaten or damage collections. My name is Alan Haley. I'm a Preservation Specialist in the Conservation Division. The campus of the library consists of three buildings on Capitol Hill, as well as other facilities further away from the center of the city. The three large buildings bear the names of early presidents, Jefferson, Adams, and Madison. The Library of Congress used to be located within the Capitol building itself until the late 19th century, when it was moved to the Jefferson building, built specifically to house the collection. With rapid growth of the library, the Adams building opened in 1931 and the Madison in 1980. Our collections contain more than 120 million items, including books, documents, photographs, as well as musical instruments, maps, globes, and other objects from across the world. The Preservation Directorate at the Library of Congress is responsible for ensuring long-term access to the intellectual content of the collections. This is achieved through a multifaceted approach carried out by four divisions in the library's mass deacidification program. The Conservation Division at the Library of Congress ensures the preservation of the library's special collections by undertaking condition surveys and rehousing projects, conducting condition assessments, basic stabilization, and full treatments. The division also participates in the management of collection storage, exhibitions, loans, digitization, and other projects. Beyond the library, the Conservation Division furthers the field of conservation by hosting advanced conservation internships. These students spend a year with Conservation Lab staff and are active in research and publishing to complete their graduate education. We have been interested in the topic of disaster preparedness and response since the mid-1990s. We have worked alongside other colleagues in developing strategies and procedures to be used in response and recovery when there is a damaging event, some of which we will introduce in this video. Whether we are talking about large institutions or small ones, all are subject to risk from a variety of threats. For us, water is our biggest threat. Remember, your situation may be different. Here at the Library of Congress, our buildings contain thousands of sprinkler heads as part of our fire prevention system, which we are very thankful for. We also have hundreds of miles of water-bearing pipes and have occasional problems with roof structures and HVAC systems. After trying for many years to identify a secure space we could use for the dedicated purpose of collections recovery, we were finally granted this room, which has become indispensable for us. We call it the Collections Recovery Room. Whenever there is an event that damages collections, we bring those materials to this area on carts. The supplies and equipment we have found most useful in collection salvage are dust masks, cotton rags, wax paper, adhesive tape, nitrile or latex gloves, paper towels, trash bags, a good vacuum with an assortment of attachments, Ziploc bags, goggles, antiseptic wipes, various kinds of absorbent interleaving materials, corrugated board of two thicknesses, E and B, a rack of shelves with fine screen supports to increase circulation of air, which aids in drying large quantities of loose leaf documents. In addition to all of this, we have found this ductless fume hood to be a huge asset to our practices. We use it mostly for mold removal from the surfaces of documents once the mold is dried and inactive. Any activity around mold may carry health risks and therefore we use a variety of personal protective gear. Disposable gloves and aprons, a mask and goggles. If your institution does not have a fume hood, you should perform dry mold removal outdoors using soft brushes and cloths. Make sure you perform this procedure well away from other human activity and always wear the same protective gear. We have two freezers which are very useful for items affected by active mold. Freezing will stop the outbreak. 
The freezers also serve as a quarantine space for items with active mold that are a threat to the rest of the collection, so separating them is necessary. We place the books in Ziploc bags before placing them in the freezer to keep them separate and to keep them from sticking to one another. Freezing is a good option for many water-damaged library materials, especially if the scale of the incident far exceeds your resources to stabilize them. Freezing buys you time to begin recovery at a later date. Freezing can be done on-site with household or commercial freezers or by a recovery specialist with access to large freezer space. Freezing can be problematic for some materials, such as early glass negatives and parchment or vellum. Your emergency plans should identify those types of very sensitive materials. It's also important to know that modern coated papers, like magazines for example, tend to stick to each other as they dry. Freezing, followed by vacuum freeze drying, may be the best treatment. Salvage is usually not something done by just one person, as there are a number of actions needed to be carried out, such as secure transport of affected materials, documentation of the event, the drying operation, and the monitoring of items. All will require multiple resources. The person who knows the collection best will select items in a type of triage by degree of damage. The groups will be the undamaged, the lightly damaged, the moderately damaged, and the extremely damaged. Those which are found to be unharmed should be separated from the salvage location immediately. In the drying area, it is recommended that you increase the rate of air circulation along with lowering the temperature. In the context of a disaster where the power is out, open windows when possible or identify a secure spot outdoors to carry out the salvage. A specialist must always verify that the water that has affected the collection's materials is clean or dirty. In the case of contaminated water events, one must always wear protective gloves and aprons at a minimum. In the case of our practice today, the water is clean and it's not necessary to wear gloves, but you can wear them if you prefer. The surface we will use as the drying station should be covered in an absorbent material. In the collections recovery room, we usually use blotter paper, but you can also use newsprint, towels, sheets, or other fabric if those materials are more readily available. For this practice salvage, we have selected materials commonly found in libraries, archives, and museums. Books, loose leaf documents, and photographic materials are among those most commonly affected. A recommended first step is to assess the overall extent of the event, which might help you establish first priorities. Drying books that are just slightly wet can be done by standing them upright and fanning out the pages. This will only give a decent result if the book has been wet along the edges and if the binding has not been substantially weakened by water. Air circulation should be light for these books and not directly on them to avoid distortion. For books that are moderately wet or very wet and for books with soft paper covers, it is best to keep them flat while drying. We can use an assortment of materials to interleave the pages, which increases the rate of absorption. With the amount of water that the book has absorbed, we cannot stand it upright. We'll place it flat with some sheets of newsprint inserted into the text block every 50 pages or so, and also between each cover and the text block. It's important not to expand the thickness of the book too much with extra material, which would weaken the binding. This soft cover book is completely soaked and definitely cannot be placed upright. In this case, we are using an alternative material for interleaving, a very soft non-woven polyester cellulose material that is several times more absorbent than paper. It can also be reused over and over. Whatever you use to interleave a wet book, it's necessary to change it out at a minimum twice a day until the book is almost dry. A weight on top of a wet book may also minimize the swelling and distortion during the drying process. Another method we use to dry books when we have many affected at the same time requires corrugated board free of dyes and a book cart with side panels. A piece of the board is inserted between each cover and the text block of each book. There should also be a piece separating each book. If the thickness of the book will allow it, also insert a piece or two as interleaving in the text block. This technique requires a much stronger airflow directly on the books. It's a slow process and it requires changing the board twice a day, 
but it gives a very satisfactory result in the end. Loose leaf documents, photos printed on paper, and large objects such as maps and posters can become extremely weak after prolonged exposure to water. Those that are extremely weak will sometimes require being lifted with a support sheet on top of the damaged document. The attraction of water to polyester film allows us to safely remove the document from the others. For very fragile materials, a controlled drying process is recommended. Using layers of absorbent paper, then polyester web, the document, another layer of polyester web, and more blotter paper allows us to make a stack of documents for drying. Putting a board with a lightweight on top of the stack will give a nice flat result. For stronger documents, you can let them dry in groups or stacks and then separate them after they have dried more. Photographs on paper supports should be dried flat. Those with the gelatin coating may stick together in a water situation as they start to dry. Don't force them apart if they resist. Consult a photograph conservator if in doubt. Film-based materials, microfilm, microfiche, slides, may have to be washed professionally after a damaging event. If possible, keep them in a container of cold, purified water or keep them refrigerated for a better result in recovery. Rolled materials will be weaker when wet. Put them aside and don't try to unroll them until dry. Remember that enclosures, originally installed to protect their contents, can become enemies of the items within because they trap water inside and don't allow the drying process to proceed. This can lead to mold outbreak. It is advisable to carefully remove the objects from their wet enclosures. Remember, however, that there may be important identifying information on the enclosure, so make sure you keep that alongside the item. The steps we have just seen have helped us over the years to recover our water damage collections. We are always interested in learning new techniques, in sharing our experience, and in hearing from you too. If you have a question for us or wish to share your information, please contact us at anro at loc.gov and alha at loc.gov. You can also contact us through our website, www.loc.gov preservation, and click on the Ask a Librarian feature. We hope you never have to salvage collections, but if you do, we hope that this information will lead to a successful result. This has been a presentation of the Library of Congress. Visit us at loc.gov.